Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Eyal, and I've been working at the J Press project uh, for the last uh, two years now. I will uh, first give uh, just general information about uh, our project, and then uh, try to uh, give other example, a few examples of how you can use our website uh, to research uh, Israeli politics. The truth is I didn't know if uh, I would be talking to people who research Israeli political history or internet researchers. I'm still not sure, but I will give a piece of both that I hope will uh, help uh, both audiences. Um, J Press Project uh, was founded in 2005 a uh, joint venture of the uh, National Library of Israel and Tel Aviv University. And uh, it's quite similar to other projects uh, worldwide. Uh, most famously is the Chronicling America of the Library of Congress and Trove of the uh, Australian National Library. And our main aim is to uh, do, uh, to upload as many <coughs> historical newspapers from Jewish uh, communities all over the world. Um, Adar spoke of six pillars earlier, and we are focusing on the first pillar he was talking about, is taking material, be it the paper itself or a microfilm that was uh, um, made 50 years ago, and uh, turning it into a digital object that you can use um, from anywhere you want. Um, up to now, we have already over one million pages with OCR. Um, the percentage of the OCR varies, uh, of course, uh, a newspaper in English has a higher percentage of OCR success than a newspaper in Yiddish. Uh, we add an average of 25,000 new pages every month, um, and we already have 39 different newspapers on our website, two recently added uh, this Sunday, uh, at the moment six languages. We have uh, Hebrew, of course, and English, and French, Yiddish. Uh, Jadir Arabic and Hungarian, and more on, uh, on planning. Um, a question uh, that we hear often when, uh, uh, when I say I work at the JPRS project is what is it good for? And I think that the main two things that uh, I can point on is that the two main goals we have, our two main goals also of the National Library of Israel, is to improve accessibility and preservation. Accessibility, of course, once you, uh, let's say 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you were a researcher and you needed access to newspapers, you would have to come to Jerusalem, to the National Library, order the microfilms a few days in advance, hope that somebody would find them, and if they wouldn't find that they would tell you if they hadn't been found, you had need to make a way to Jerusalem. Um, today, all you need to do is go on our website, and see everything, any time of day, from any part of the world. And uh, of course, this helps to preserve our uh, originals, uh, which are in, let's say, not the best shape. Uh, just a few, two weeks ago, I was at the central storage of the National Library uh, preparing uh, to, preparing uh, an uploading of one of the biggest newspapers in America uh, for Jewish community. The forwards, and it's the original situation is very, very bad, and uh, we hope that after we digitize them and upload them, nobody will ever need to touch the paper again. It will be preserved that way, and it will be easier for people to uh, use the material. Now, um, I will try to focus a little bit on the topic itself: um, Israeli politics research with our uh, website. I will first talk of uh, something that has to do more with using the material itself, the, um, the newspapers and how what we have can help research. And the second example would be more of a focus on technology or the, what our tools can help you do with uh, the newspapers. Um, as uh, I did not mention before, we have newspapers dating back to the 19th century. Most of them are from the 20th century, but from early 20th century on, we have many, many newspaper pages. And uh, although uh, some tend to think that uh, Israeli politics started maybe in 1948, uh, using our website, you can see that uh, 
its uh, roots are much deeper than 1948. Um, I will give an example of this man named Itzhak Greenboim to uh, researchers of uh, Jewish uh, history in Poland. He's known as a Zionist activist and also the editor of uh, Hatzfira and Heint, Hatzfira in Hebrew, Heint in Yiddish, two very important newspapers. And uh, if you are a historian or researcher of Israeli politics or Israeli history, you know him as um, the first interior uh, minister of Israel, one of the 37 people to sign the Israeli Declaration of Independence. Um, I will look at his uh, writings or writings upon him uh, to show that uh, focusing on different topics or different pupils, we, you can see uh, trends and uh, transformations uh, that occurred uh, in politics uh, that affected uh, early Israel, early Israeli politics. Um, let's see here. Uh, I will give now uh, just a few examples from pre-1948 press we have. This from Yiddish, mainly. Uh, uh, this is a report of a uh, Green Boy meeting uh, uh, Chaim Weizmann, the first president of Israel later. This is from all, uh, what I'm showing now is from Hein from the 1930s. Um, another re report from Prague from the 18th uh, Zionist uh, Congress in Prague. Uh, he was here, you can see his name, next to Ben Gurion and Kaplan and Rupin as a delegate from Jerusalem. Um, uh, an article that uh, talks about uh, the political situation in Israel and its improvement in the 1930s. Um, also uh, uh, from Heint. And uh, now this is really, I'm talking about the material. So if you're an internet researcher, you can ask yourself, okay, how do I reach all this information and what do I do with it? I will talk about that in a moment. But now I've moved on to 10 years later, 15 years later, in the late 1940s in the establishment of Israel. Um, he moved to Israel. He was a very important figure here. And uh, you can also find a lot of things about him in regarding to the local politics. Um, the bottom uh, headline here is, uh, talks about a fight that he had with Ben Gurion regarding the uh, Jewish terror. And you can see he had a lot of talks with the Etzel and Lechi was very into that topic. And uh, I want to give you uh, a different uh, uh, heading from an article from 1935, which asks uh, why Greenboim re uh, resigned from the leadership of uh, the Aliyah department. Now, I won't give the whole article here explaining why he uh, resigned because it would be too long and it's in Yiddish. Um, but he had a history with Ben-Gurion of uh, fighting from the 1930s. And uh, if you are a historian, you are trying to figure out early politics in Israel and why Greenboim, who was a very prominent figure, eventually left, uh, you can say left the public sphere rather early. He was uh, almost president of Israel uh, Little people know that in five and 52, when Ben Svi replaced uh, Weizmann, he was also a candidate. He lost. He left the public sphere. And uh, going back to the 1930s, using our uh, different uh, sources on our website, you can build a, a kind of road map. You can look at it as a SOPA if you want. But uh, if you research these topics, uh, it can be very, very helpful to give a long durée of uh, Israeli politics, not starting just at 1948. This was just one short example of more for people who are into the topics. Now I'll we'll try to give an example for, um, which has to do uh, very much with what the Yoav spoke before. Um, we are about to launch uh, a website in the coming months. We have our website right now. I don't know how many people of you have used it, and I hope you will, and I am sure that after we will launch our new uh, a new website, we call it now JPress2, we will maybe find a better name in the future, um, it will be much more user-friendly. We are aware that uh, it 
still has a lot of things to improve. Um, one of the things that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are aware that there are quite a few bugs in our uh, website. We are constantly working to improve them. Questions after? Okay. And the new website will have bugs probably, but we will work to fix them. It will be uh, accessible uh, through smartphones and through tablets, and it will have different, uh, different search options that we don't have today. Um, some of them uh, similar to what uh, uh, to, uh, to what we have on Google's uh, Ngram uh, viewer. Are you aware? I don't know if people know that. I'll say it word. You can say, you can pick a word, search this certain word, and see how many times it appeared in a book, let's say between 1850 and 1950. You choose your own uh, time span that you want to search. We have uh, that tool now in our new website. Uh, what you will see here is the results of a search not in the current website, but in the forthcoming one. It is a better version. It won't look like this. This is just a preview. Um, political uh, research, one of the topics that I'm very interested in is uh, collective memory and how certain peoples are forgotten, how certain people are remembered in uh, collective memory. And uh, we can use one of the new tools uh, to search that topic. You can see, I. Uh, chose uh, Jabotinsky, uh, the revisionist leader, uh, until in 1940, and uh, how his name or his uh, figure was uh, mentioned in different newspapers in the time span of 1950 to 1980. And I chose two different newspapers, one from Cherut, from the right side of the Israeli political map, and Dava, which was uh, the uh, newspaper of uh, Mapai. On, say, today we say left, left center. I won't get into that. Uh, so I ran the search Jabotinsky, and these are the results. I don't know if you can see it. I will say from 1950 to 1954, 107 mentions, and de slowly declining. Uh, important to say, it's not that in the 1970s he was not mentioned. We still don't have the 1970s in our website, so he was not forgotten, that's for sure. Uh, in Davao, you can see that uh, mentioning uh, Jabotinsky only rose. In the 1950s, he was barely mentioned, and going to the 60s and 70s, more than doubled uh, the time. He now, you have to take into account that true street name, he was uh, a lot of streets in Israel named after him, so maybe some of the articles refer to Jabotinsky Street and not to Jabotinsky the person. And in this case, uh, we, need, we still haven't launched the website because we are working to improve it. And uh, what you have spoke before is uh, very important because y if you can uh, tell the difference between Jabotinsky the person and Jabotinsky the street, then your search will be much more uh, Fruitful, I can uh, I'll be sure of that. Another thing that we have on our new website is the option to see behind the, the scenes of the OCR. Today in the website, if you search a word, you will, uh, uh, you will get the results. You will find the article that was OCR'd. Uh, in the new website, you will be able to see behind the scenes a te the text. You can copy, paste it, use it. And if you're working on a Yiddish newspaper, you can do it. I don't recommend Google Translate. It's better you know Yiddish, but not everybody will speak English, Yiddish, or French, or German. And if you just want to get the sense of what was written in a certain article, you can copy-paste what was uh, the result of the OCR, which you cannot do today. And um, that can be very helpful. Uh, another uh, search uh, is uh, back to our friend Greenboim in collective memory. Uh, this was the amount of time he was mentioned in Davao between 1950 and 1980. 
a slow decline. As we said, in the 50s, you left the public sphere. You can see in the 1970s, um, 70 uh, references, uh, early 1970s. That's because he passed away in 1970. A lot of uh, newspaper articles about him. Uh, com to compare with uh, Maariv, the same years, uh, the, search results, the research results excuse me, are different. You can see that he was mentioned a lot in 1950s and still in the 1960s, but come 1970, uh, he was barely mentioned and also in the years uh, of his death, after his death. Um, what exactly this means and why his figure was forgotten or erased I don't have the answers for that. The researchers of these topics probably have a better thought or idea. I'm just saying that our tools uh, can help researchers in this sense. Um, another, uh, one moment. another topic is not just uh, collective memory in that sense, but also uh, political discourse can be searched in uh, new tools. Um, different uh, terms are used in the 1950s than we are used today in 2000. And using these tools of searching and finding how many times each word was mentioned, you can find out when a term was popular. Sometimes it, you can spot the year when it was uh, maybe first used and also when it was forgotten and, ceased, and people ceased using it. Um, just two short examples on that one. Uh, Kalantarism is, uh, I tell you, I did not know what that means before. Okay, I'll try to make fast and I will skip Essek Beach. But Kalantarism, it was a term uh, today in Hebrew, I don't know if, to correct me, I would maybe translate to Kisologia or something like this. In the 1960s, it was a very common term. Um, and today, and you see 1980s, it was completely forgotten and that, uh, that can help on political discourse. Um, I will give two additional projects that were not uh, side projects to historical Jewish press, but made use of it. One of them is a website we launched before the last elections. Um, it was called the Sefat Prirot, and it had the various videos and uh, uh, videos, uh, ephemera, which is uh, propaganda, and also uh, newspaper, uh, the, the coverage from press for uh, the elections. Uh, every elections in Israel since 1948 uh, were covered in this website, and you can see a lot of how the different uh, sides of the political map, well, which each had their own newspapers, of course, covered the elections. Um, at the moment, in this website, you can't use all the search options, but once you find something, you can go back to our uh, main website and use that. Um, another uh, pilot that we ran just uh, a, year, a year ago was a historical children press. We don't have a lot of uh, material on that website right now. Hopefully in the near future we will have more. I fully hope that we will do a whole program of digitizing the whole children press. And uh, you can use, of course, Children's Press to research many topics in them. Uh, the history of uh, Israeli politics, seeing, uh, give found just one quick example last evening, uh, a letter that uh, one Chagai Kafri, a 12-year-old, uh, wrote to Moshe Shertok in 1947, uh, later to be the Prime Minister of Israel, Moshe Sharet. And, uh, I w can read this quickly, but uh, he speaks to Moshe Sharet as a, a hero. I don't know if uh, today uh, we could see political leaders uh, getting receiving such uh, letters from uh, children. Um, I have to finish, I see. So I um, plan to say a few more uh, things, but uh, you can visit us at JPress and we can send your questions. We have a contact us down there and we answer very quickly and we also receive uh, not just questions but also suggestions. If you have something that is bothering you that you think could be better, you s send them. We will try to implement them in the new website. Uh, we have different uh, thoughts in the future. Um, just to give one example, uh, the OCR is a problem when we're not talking about English, as Yav said, and 
Jewish press was mainly not English. It was Hebrew, it was Yiddish, it was Hungarian, Russian, French, German. And we have a plan to use, uh, like, uh, in that popular uh, talk on TED, uh, Louis Van An, where the public helps uh, to fix OCR, we plan maybe to use that to help, the public will help us uh, complete the digitization and OCR of Yiddish and Hebrew, and uh, that's it.